so I'm speaking with Nathaniel uh, Levese, who has quickly made a lasting imprint in film and film music with his melodic sensibilities and style. Uh, Nathaniel is behind the score to Dawning and Fading of the Cries, and his most recent score is to The Toy Soldiers, which follows a group of teens over one night in the 80s. Uh, Nathaniel uh, upcoming scores include The Lost Tree, Intruder, Wolf Mother, and uh, Crowing Lakes. Nathaniel, thanks so much for uh, speaking today. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, so to start, I would love to know and love to learn how you got interested in music and, and at what point in that journey did you decide to focus on film scoring? You know, uh, I grew up in an artistic environment. Um, I was always involved in music and theater when I was young. Um, took piano lessons, violin lessons, things like that when I was a child. And then I think music was the thing that uh, I loved the most as far as just what I did in my off time. You know, I, would, I, would, I was constantly listening to music of all kinds, um, symphonic, you know, rock, whatever. Uh, then when I got into high school, I got really serious about music. I ended up joining the orchestra. Uh, I met my first mentor at that time, which was my high school orchestra director. And he started teaching me about theory and conducting and composition. And I actually uh, had the opportunity to write some music and it was performed, oh, wow. which is a pretty rare thing. You know, I mean, it was a great opportunity for me to sort of break the ice and, and learn. And, uh, you know, film music, I grew up in the 80s and uh, film music at that time, especially John Williams, James Horner, everybody, uh, Jerry Goldsmith. Uh, it was, you know, unprecedented, gorgeous lyric music, and I, I loved it so much, and I, I really fell in love with the idea of uh, writing music for film at that time. I think that was the time I got super serious about it. Wow, that's really cool uh, to have a mentor that, that early and kind of uh, guiding you that way. Um, yeah, his name was Roland Rodzidis. He was a fantastic uh, teacher. So now when you uh, approach a film, uh, what's, the, what's the first aspect of it that kind of speaks to you the loudest? I mean, is it the, the characters, the setting, the story, or the technical aspects? I mean, I'm sure it's everything, but like, what's really the first thing that pops out to you when you're presented kind of the first cut of a film that gets your creative juices flowing? Well, I think for me personally, I don't know if it makes sense or not so much, but uh, the idea, whatever the idea is behind it, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, I'll see if I see a, maybe even a poster for it at first or some artwork, uh, even when I see some of the first imagery, um, it's really sort of the, the driving force behind it that really inspires me. Uh, you know, the director has his imprint on it. And then in my own mind, I can sort of expand that and then also maybe uh, entertain other ideas, you know, like for example, like toy soldiers, you know, I knew what it was about. It was about the eighties, these kids in the eighties, which I, you know, I related to very strongly. Mm -hmm. And not only was it the, the film that inspired me, but then that just led me to think about my own experiences and then experiences of other people that I knew at the time, you know, I mean, it, all of that sort of comes in and influences my music for sure. So uh, when you start writing music, what's the first thing that you do? Is it, is it, do you try to com come up with a theme, or do you toy around with melodies, uh, or do you focus on the characters? I mean, what is kind of that first spark that kind of ignites everything? It's different for every project. Um, I think often, at least at this stage in my career, oftentimes it's uh, the initial conversations with the director. Oh, okay. Sometimes the director will say, you know, hey, uh, can you do a demo for me. Can you give me an example of what you might do? Or can you give me, um, can you show me that you can do some music similar to this other, you know, film or something like that? Um, in that case, that sort of is a direct line into what I have to do. Right. right. Other times it might be just sort of a, a color or something, you know, sometimes a director like, uh, like with Donning, the director definitely knew the, the tone that he wanted. And so I started experimenting with, you know, sort of sounds and tones and, and colors, if that makes sense. Oh, no, it, I, I love the idea of, of matching visuals to sound. I think colors do kind of inspire certain sounds out of whether it's mm. a composer. I mean, even as a visual person like myself, because I'm not a composer, but when I see certain colors, you can hear certain things that, you know, would match to that. Yes. 
Um, so for uh, for toy the toy soldiers, you have a film and characters that exist in a different time period. Was it Im immediately obvious that the music had to kind of come from that time period as well? I mean, what was the kind of the first conversations you had with your director about the score? Well, it was obvious. Yeah, I mean, I think when anybody mentions the '80s, especially now looking back on mm -hmm. the '80s, the first thing people think of is the music. I mean, there was so much great music that came out of the, the 80s. There was a lot of bad music, too. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was certainly a uh, style uh, setting moment. It was an intrinsic moment in music. And um, the uh, the director came... Well, I first found out about the film through the one of the lead actresses in the film who was in Donning. I, she's someone that I know. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to her about uh, getting in contact with the director. And so then the director... Uh, and I ended up talking, and yeah, instantly it was, okay, 80s music. He first referenced Tangerine Dream uh, okay. from uh, specifically the score for Risky Business, and uh, that was a great, you know, jumping off point. It was fun for me to, you know, he, he asked me to do a demo in that style, and so I did, and uh, it was a blast to work on. <laughs> So and there's a lot of characters going on in in this or that are kind of encompassing the story of this film. How did you handle them musically? Did you treat them differently, or did you kind of encompass a a score that kind of wove over everything? Yeah, I think it was more of a blanket type score. Um, there were no individual character themes per se. I, there was a couple little motifs, if I can use that word, or or little musical mm -hmm. indications. Um, when certain things would be happening, I think it was more situational. You know, if there was a tragic moment, or if there was a tender moment, or if there were, you know, it was more like that rather than each character having their own theme because there were, there were so many characters. Right, uh, right. We, were, and we were bouncing back and forth between the, the stories, the way the, the, the storyline is weaved. So. Right. And uh, there's uh, the film also uses some other songs which are on the soundtrack as well. Did you know what the songs were going to be before you wrote your music, or did you? I mean, did you have to try to kind of make your music feel part of the soundscape, or was that not even part of your process? Yeah, no, it was interesting. Uh, the band Daily Bread. There were a few bands in there, but the two major ones, uh, the band Daily Bread, I was told about by the director. Mm -hmm. uh, and he sent me some of their music, and I, by the way, I think they're fantastic. I, I listen, I now listen to their music uh, just on my own. And then the band Gliss uh, is a, it's a duo, uh, Victoria, Cecilia, and the, I think the, the gentleman's name is Martin Klingman, I, I believe. I don't know him very well, but I know Victoria. I've known her for like 15 years. And uh, we sort of came to L.A. at the same time, and we sort of started, you know, uh, with, with our musical efforts and trying to get ahead and, uh, and uh, achieve some success. So, you know, I've known her for a very long time, and I was thrilled that uh, her music uh, ended up in the film because Gliss is also a fantastic group. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so but beyond, uh, beyond, you know, that, I really didn't have any, anything to do with the songs. Uh, but did, did you have to kind of... Did you try to uh, listen to their, the styling of the music so that your music would feel part of the world, or was it just not really kind of part of your creative process at all? Well, I mean, generally the whole tone of the film was 80s, whether it was the score or the songs. Um, by listening to Gliss, I mean, even before Toy Soldiers came along, I, you know, like I just said, I, I knew of Gliss and listened to their music. Right, right. It's kind of a new wave. It almost reminds me of like some old Blondie, you know, <laughs> songs and things like that. Um, and then with Daily Bread, you know, it's very 80s tone, uh, right. so to speak. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't so much a, a matching or anything like that, but it was just sort of, um, you know, make, making sure that every element sonically in the film said something about the 80s. Right, right. And the, the film is uh, uh, kind of has a longer running time than most films. It's around two hours, mm -hmm. 20 minutes. I mean, mm -hmm. and then, is that a challenge to try to kind of, and especially it's kind of these uh, interwoven storylines, is it a challenge for a composer to kind of uh, structure a score around that and kind of encompass everything? Well, yes and no. Uh, it, specifically with this film, uh, the film was longer, uh, two hours, 20 minutes, like you said, but the, the score was not so long. There was not so much score in the film. Right. Um, so... I sort of caught a lucky break there as far as the work, <laughs> as far as the workload. Um, 
but yes, in a situation where there is a longer film and a lot of music, um, certainly it's a challenge. Yeah. I just did a film called uh, Lady Bathory, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a it's sort of an epic uh, horror drama. It's an interesting combination about a historical figure and. Uh, it was, I think it was about a two hour film and there was a lot of music in that. And that was, uh, that was certainly a, a different workload. Right. I mean, to try to, is it, is it harder to, uh, is it just because of the deadlines to get that much done? I mean, how much time do you have to work usually on a, a film? Well, it, it depends on the film, but it, I mean, it's constant, you know, you're, you're, uh, when you're on the film it's 12, 14 hour days typically. Yeah. <laughs> no sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Lots of coffee. All right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, just looking back on the toy soldiers, what was the most rewarding aspect you found of, of working on the film? Yeah, there were several rewarding aspects. Uh, it was my first real serious drama. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it, which I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to do a film about the '80s or that takes place in the '80s. I never thought I would get to do that. And in fact, there was a film that uh, Ron Perlman was going to be in. Uh, this was a number of years ago, maybe five or six years ago, called The Gatekeeper. And it was sort of a throwback 80s, like Monster Squad type of movie. And I was going to be scoring it. And then Ron Perlman ended up getting Sons of Anarchy. And, uh, you know, he he couldn't do the film. Right. So that sort of fell apart. And I thought, well, there goes my, my chance to do an 80s thing. <laughs> and um, working with, uh, you know, people that I knew again, Jara, she's a fantastic actress it was lovely to you know be in a project with her uh the director uh eric peter carlson uh he's extremely passionate and supportive of of artists and he he lets you be creative he's open to ideas and things so it was it was very generally a great experience and uh, i mean it, 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 the, the end result is great too because i love the the score how it works and i think it really does stand on its own uh even outside the film as this kind of really uh fantastic kind of these kind of layers of emotions and these that the tracks kind of stand on their own as these little i would say vignettes almost <laughs> so i was wondering if you could talk about uh any projects that you're uh, currently working on that we can look forward to well one of the things i'm working on right now is i'm scoring a film called intruder right uh, i saw you post about that on facebook yeah and it stars john robinson he was an elephant and transformers and uh, moby is actually acting in it the the musician moby oh, the dj wow <laughs> whom i i love his music yeah, uh, yeah. i've never seen him in any movies but he plays a uh, sort of a creepy cello instructor in this film which is kind of cool yeah um so uh yeah that's what i'm working on right now um wolf mother is um uh, i just got signed on to do that so that's and that, gonna be, and yeah, that reconnects connect, you with your uh, Toy Soldiers director, right? Yes, that's correct, yeah. So collaboration starting to build, I see. <laughs> yes, I'm th very thankful for that. It's always nice to have re returning customers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, bef before we uh, wrap up, I always like to ask composers uh, this one question. Um, if you could score any film ever made, pretending the original score never existed, which film would you choose? I think I lost you again. Oh, well, I'll repeat it. So I like to before we wrap up. I always like to ask composers uh, this one question: uh, If you could score any film ever made with uh, pretending the original score never existed, uh, which film would you choose? Wow, <laughs> that's a tough question. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> if you if you could have any playground to play in, it's kind of the idea of it. My goodness, that's that's very difficult. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I'm sure I could probably create a list as long as uh, you know <laughs> Hollywood Boulevard or something like that. But uh, the first film that popped into my mind, Back to the Future. Wow, good choice. Um, yeah, you know, because it just has it has everything, you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's high adventure. It's it's funny. It's you know it's all that good stuff. So but I'll what, start with that. How about that? <laughs> that's good. But what I love about the score is a great choice. Is that what Silvestri did? Is it's a science fiction film, but the score never really feels you know science fictiony. It's a very adventure kind of uh, fanfareish type thing. Yes, and it works amazingly. You know. <laughs> yes, and it's such a fantastic 
one of the greatest themes I think ever oh, yes. written for an adventure film. Absolutely. Um, but uh, Daniel, thank you so much for your time today. It's been such a pleasure uh, talking with you, and uh, hopefully we get to do this again soon. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Thank you very much, Kyle. It was nice to see you.